This is Brookwood in Woking, the UK's largest private cemetery. In 2006, its millionaire owner, Ramadan Gune, died unexpectedly. Ever since, this burial ground has been a battleground for an inheritance war between his family and his lover. This is a story of claim and counterclaim, where nothing is certain. It's a wilderness of mirrors, so to try and get to the bottom of this is a very difficult story. A courtroom drama over a murder plot and a dispute over a missing will. I had seen the will, and he always said his affairs were in order. And one man's struggle to clear his name. I'm a Turkish boy. I drive a Porsche. I'm out of North London. I must be guilty. Everyone knows that it's wise to write a final will and testament to put your affairs in order and reward those you love the most. But an inheritance can provoke confrontation and conflict. And when family ties are stretched to breaking point, the result is usually a bitter battle of wills. Ramadan Gune died a very wealthy man, having built up a large property empire from scratch. But Ramadan's fifth child, Erkin Gune, remembers one purchase standing out from all the rest. Uh, one day he came home, and I remember it clearly. And he said, oh, I bought a cemetery. And we said, what? We all looked at each other and we thought, what that? He said, I bought a cemetery. And we said, you're mad. You can't buy a cemetery. But Ramadan Gune wasn't a man to be told what he could and couldn't do. In 1985, he bought Brookwood in Woking, the second biggest private cemetery in the world. This man has achieved so much in his lifetime that you couldn't really question uh, whether he was right or wrong, because he was right. Sunday Times journalist and author Michael Gillard has followed the often turbulent story of the Gune family for many years. Ramalan Gune was a um, police officer in the British Army, or in the British um, Protectorate of Cyprus at the time um, of the Civil War in the 1950s. Uh, he's a Turk um, by origin. And he told me when I interviewed him that um, he had also set, helped set up a secret paramilitary group that was helping to fight the Greeks for control of, of Cyprus. So, you know, I mean, he was a heavily political um, individual. Ramadan and his wife Suela came to the UK from Cyprus in 1958. Though he was a man with plenty of enemies, he had a flair for business and set about investing in property in London's green lanes. While these steadily flourished, Erkin was born in London and grew up knowing little of his father's past. So he was a man who was um, not short of a bob. He was certainly a, a, a millionaire several times over, but his assets were quite opaque um, and were split between the UK and Northern Cyprus. Well, he never wanted for anything, you know, and he Mum and Dad made sure of that, you know. Mum would work every day of her life. You know, in fact, uh, m my mum uh, passed away working. Suela Gune died on New Year's Day 1992 in the music shop that she ran in Islington but her death would trigger a feud that still rages today. In the years that followed, Ramadan had a number of relationships with women, but the arrival of one woman in 1997 sparked the war that continues to this day. Erkin's wife, Melanie, remembers seeing her father-in-law talking to a mysterious blonde one afternoon. One day I'd gone to the airport to deliver some documents for a freight company, came back and she was sitting in the office. To be honest with you, I thought nothing of it. This woman's name was Diane Holliday. It was a name Mel had never heard before, but one that would soon be known throughout Britain. In 
in 1997, after the death of Dodi Fayed with Princess Diana, Diane Holiday approached Dodi's father, Muhammad Al Fayed, and told him that she was the mother of a secret love child fathered by Dodi. The nation's media gasped. The allegation was incredible, the way she went about trying to persuade Fayed and um, it catapulted her into the national media and then um, there was a lot of investigation work being done into her background and so started a roller coaster um, of um, story scandal, story scandal involving Diana Holiday. Holiday said she had given the child up for adoption in America and newspaper reports claimed that the grieving Al Fayed gave her £5,000 to travel to the US and discuss bringing the child back to Britain. But demand soon grew on Miss Holiday to prove her claim. And then she suddenly comes up with the suggestion that the very documentary proof we've all been waiting for has been robbed from her in a very curious instant at the petrol station late at night by two men assaulting her in a car and then making away with the documents. A bruised and beaten Miss Holiday appeared before the cameras to describe her ordeal. But now it wasn't just the media asking difficult questions. Uh, they originally charged her with wasting police time because there was glaring problems in her account yet again um, over how this um, alleged assault and robbery had taken place. In court, a Home Office pathologist stated that Miss Holiday's injuries could have been self-inflicted, but could also have been the result of a violent assault, and she was acquitted. But a strange twist of fate would eventually set Dion Holiday on a collision course with Erkin Gune. In 1997, Dodi Fayed was buried at Brookwood, and it was here that Diane met its wealthy owner, and the couple began a relationship. When she turned up, we see.